Sometimes a whiskey just crosses your path and you absolutely have to talk about it. Welcome back, Dram Fam, to the Whiskey Diary. So I get a text saying, um, hey, have you seen this Craig Ellicke? Now, usually a nine-year-old Craig Ellicke wouldn't be something that would drag me out of bed especially readily. I do like Craig Ellicke whiskey. There is a very, there is this very specific thing that I really like about it, which I'll get to in a minute. But it's not usually something that, you know, drag me out of bed immediately piqued my interest until he mentioned that it was a bottling by one of my, probably one of my all time favorite bottlers, especially at the minute. That is Dram Moore. So, okay, Craig Ellicke, great liquid. Nine year old, I'm, I'm fine with whatever age statement it is, to be honest. Unless it was like super, super young, I can sometimes find a lot of the super young stuff at the minute. I'm tending to prefer things with a little bit of age. Then he mentions it's a nine year old Craig Ellicke finished in a red wine cask, bottled by Dram Moore. For me, that's somewhat of a no-brainer. The only one thing that could potentially stand in the way, and that is the price. Then he told me it was 40 pounds a bottle. I'm sold. But before we start talking about the liquid, let's talk about the distillery. Now, Craig Gellicke are famous for um, their, the, the way that they distill their whiskey, more specifically, the way that they condense their whiskey. Um, Craig Gellicke still use worm tub condensers. Um, on their website, they describe it as a muscly whiskey. I think I kind of prefer the term meaty, but you know, whatever. Fundamentally, what it boils down to is, um, in, instead of using a shell and tube condenser, which is arguably one of the most common, it's kind of a short Coke can type unit where the, the liquid, the, the, the hot alcohol vapors flow one way, water flows the other, and uh, that's what you use to cool it. A worm tub uses like a large basin with a long copper tube that cycles through the inside of it like a worm in a tub. There are a number of reasons why I think these are cool. I'm not going to go into them now, but a lot of people cite that worm tub condensers produce a liquid which is richer, meatier, has a better, like stronger texture, which obviously to some people might not be quite so desirable. But to me, I think it's really, really interesting. Now, as I said, the other thing that absolutely sold me on this whiskey is Dram Moore. Now, I've got to come out and say, obviously, yeah, this is not sponsored by them in any way. I've been a fan of Dram Moore's whiskey for a very, very long time. In fact, this six-year-old Kalila was uh, one of the first ever indie bottles that I ever bought. I think at the time I only had about seven bottles of whiskey and this popped up. I've still got the dregs of it in there. I think to be honest, I'm kind of uh, holding on to the last of this as kind of more of a historical memento. But this is absolutely wonderful. And to be honest, this pretty much set a standard for every single one of the Dram Moors that um, I've had since. Arguably one of, one of my all time favorite whiskies is the Ben Nevis white port finish. It's a Dram Moor. Another one of my recent favorites, a Ben Nevis finished in a PX Hogshead. Another Dram Moor. So obviously when, uh, when Stevie reached out and said, have you tried this? You've got to try it. It's 40 quid. Let me know what you think. I picked it up. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. This is a Craig Ellicke that of course makes it a Speyside whiskey. It is nine years old. It is bottled at 52 0.1%. It is one of 234 bottles and it was finished in a first fill Portuguese red wine barrique. It does not say what the majority of the maturation was done in. I don't believe that it would have spent all nine years in a uh, first fill Portuguese red wine barrique, but we can assume that it is a refill bourbon. But probably the best thing about this is that it's only 40 quid a bottle. So, let's get on to tasting it. 
Now we don't often like to talk about colour here and it probably doesn't translate very well on camera at all but it has this wonderful peachy ever so slightly pink hue to it. On the nose now I will say initially when I um when I poured my first dram of this I did find it to be just a little bit bright maybe a little bit too ethanol a little bit more alcohol than I would have liked so uh, I left it out. Uh, Stevie actually suggested that I leave it out for a little bit and I can honestly say it worked wonders. Right off the rip it's quite peachy, it's quite bright, it's got quite a, a distinct almost white whiny kind of nose to it which I'm not so much of a fan of so I'm gonna leave this for 20 minutes or so and we'll come back and finish the rest of the tasting then a few moments later so it has been 20 minutes and actually a, uh, a different glass and already you can tell this has opened up considerably on the nose now initially you get some really nice red fruits red currants maybe almost like cranberries it's still it's still got like a bit of a bright sparkle but there's a much richer, deep kind of compote note to it. Wonderfully sweet, maybe even a touch vegetal. That kind of vegetal kind of manifests itself closer to like fresh tobacco, um, like a packet of cigarettes, like unsmoked cigarettes, unburnt cigars, an ever so slight leatheriness to it as well. There's almost a slight piney resinous note going on but immediately followed up with those nice juicy red currants you could almost tell me this had maybe just got like a whiff of peat in there ever so ever so slightly it was like a really subtle underlying smoky note but it's almost like a salty smokiness that oiliness that kind of um meatiness now really starts to sit forward there's an a there's a bitterness but it's not it's not an unpleasant bitterness it's really quite nice I, it's, I guess it's somewhat akin to like like orange rind orange pith even though it's bitter it's actually really quite tasty i will say it's picking up a bit of a bit of a like a dark chocolate note like dark chocolate candy ginger kind of vibe going on as i'm getting more as as my palate's getting more used to it the flavour's darkening quite a lot. On the finish, the sweetness really starts to like develop, almost starts to swell. That cigar note that we had uh, initially is starting to turn vegetal again, but this time it's like quite a lot sweeter. On the back end, almost like an ever so slight chili spice like a chipotle slightly smoky sweet chili spice going back in loads more sweetness off almost like starburst kind of red berries on the front end that stem ginger seems to just propagate all the way through now and yeah that that really nice kind of chili finish it really is quite quite bright and it kind of gets you on the uh, on the sides of the mouth so what do i think of it well i've had better but i've had better at a considerably higher price point this is 40 pounds a bottle you would be hard pressed to find something in your local supermarket that i believe to be as good as this for that price. In fact, I dare say you'd be hard pressed to find something as good as this for that price anywhere. This is another prime example of a good quality cask of good quality spirit that has been bottled by a good quality bottler, put forward at a price that is incredibly reasonable for what it is. This is a prime example of a really, really good value whiskey. It's brands like Dram Moore that really get me excited about independent bottlers. They're taking whiskey that you know, doing things with it that are unique 
that are different and putting it out there for prices that you are highly unlikely to see from uh, the distillery if they were to bottle it themselves. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I've had such fantastic Drammore bottles in the past. Maybe I'm just expecting it to be that good. But quite honestly, they've almost never let me down. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching and an extra special thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Let me know down in the comments if you have tried this. Let me know if you are a fan of Craig Ellerke and let me know if you're a fan of Dram Moore, if you've got any other independent bottlers you think I should check out. And on that note, Slanchava.